Praise God. God is so good. God is so good. And if she had been aborted, there might not even be me in the ministry. Who knows? Uh, she's been such a support, such a support. We value life. We value life and what God can do, the whole potential of each, each one of us. You know, I've been talking and teaching people this week uh, during the morning sessions about how to move in the gifts of the Spirit, tongues and interpretation and prophecy, and, and how easy it is when you know the biblical basis of it. We've made it so mysterious, it seems out of our reach. So that's why one reason why I wrote these two books. One, Spiritual Gifts, A Fresh Look. Normally, these kind of textbooks that were written for pastors at the Bible college and seminary level, and two seminary presidents have said this is the best book available in Pentecostal circles on spiritual gifts, commentaries, and so on. Usually, they print 3,000 books and no more. Because textbooks, uh, they don't sell a lot of them. This book has sold over 18,000 books. And we have this available for you in the back. And then the parallel book to it about how the drama of redemption, how everything we do is a prophetic act. You need to understand how powerful and how important you are in the kingdom of God. And this has to do with family, husband, wife, parent, child, singles, uh, a business, all of those things. In fact, uh, some people buy it just for chapter 3 where I talk about sex and marriage as an act of worship to God. Uh, <laughs> folks, I, I am not one of, I'm not a wild Pentecostal. I don't swing from the chandeliers. But I want you to know Everything I say is solidly biblical, and you need to, to read these. Uh, both of these books are available for $20 out there, and they, they we'll have them out there in the back if you're interested. I want you to turn today to Ephesians chapter 3. And if you're on the app, the ICLV app, my sermon is downloaded on that. Today I want to talk to you further about this Holy Spirit and how we can exercise the gifts. And I discovered along the way that the Bible is the best commentary on gifts ever. And the title of my message today is, Know Your Role and the Gifts Will Flow. If you really know who you are, do you know who you are? There are four roles that I want to mention here that are right here in Ephesians chapter 3. You know, folks, we're, we're facing a huge challenge. Not only is the world getting more and more confusing, but there are 8 billion people on the face of the earth right now. 8 billion. When I was growing up in my preteen years, 3 billion people on the face of the earth. The challenge is huge, but I want you to know God's Spirit is moving in an incredible way. You know, there are about nearly 700 million Pentecostal charismatic believers in the world today. That means one out of every 12 people alive on the face of the earth knows about the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm not at a point of defeat or discouragement. I'm at a point of saying, let's claim this world for the glory of God. Let's claim lost souls for Jesus Christ. Most of the places my wife and I go to, the countries in Asia, they go through tremendous persecution. But I want you to know, it's not our wisdom. It's not our talent. It's not our charisma. It is our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit that penetrates all of these areas for the glory of God. That's why I want to equip the entire church, everywhere I go, to equip you to learn how to minister in the gifts of the Spirit. Everything Everything I teach is totally transferable. I am not such a super spiritual person that I can unlock special mysteries for. I can teach you the Bible. And the Bible is the best commentary on how to begin to exercise and move in the gifts of the Spirit. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Point number one. You are the body of Christ. Would you say it to someone right next to you? You are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want us to take a look at the verse, Ephesians 3, verse 6. Could we read it together? All right. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. We are one body. That means you are important. Tell somebody next to you, you are important. Hallelujah. 
You see, the Bible says the body consists of the eye, the ear, the hand, the nose, all the different parts of the body. We are all equally important. The young Christian, the immature Christian, the struggling Christian, the mature Christian, the one who's been through Bible college and seminary. It doesn't matter. We're all equally important. Now, some have different responsibilities than other people. But nevertheless, when you realize who you are, that sets you free. I've discovered that when you have that sense of esteem, I am a child of God. I am a son. I am a daughter of God. And God has poured out his spirit within me. Then you have confidence to begin to minister in the gifts of the spirit. You see, if we are all members of the body, then all of us can impart. We impart our life. And the Holy Spirit touches our lives, and we want to impart our life. Folks, when I come up here, I am not giving you a speech. I am not talking to you. I am not sharing just knowledge. I am giving you my life. Do you understand? Everywhere I go, I say, I'm not here to impress you with anything. I'm here to give you my life. And when we're here to share our life as part of the body of Christ, then the gifts start to flow in and through our lives. You see, it's not a matter of, uh, 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 of, of how spiritual you are. You know, when I was pastoring in San Francisco, uh, we, a lot of our church were young teenagers. And we had a, a, a worship leader, a, a choir uh, leader, who was very musical, but not very mature spiritually. So, but we use them because when you have a young church, uh, you use whoever you can use. And, and, and he shocked me. At the age of 21, I was asked to go to the state of Colorado from San Francisco to help raise funds for missionary cars. It was called Speed the Light. And uh, I thought, what an honor. And I was just trying to get up there and preach my heart out. And if you know me, if Jesus is coming in five minutes, I just preach faster. <laughs> uh, I, I just go for it. But, but, uh, but instead of uh, me getting up to preach, he said, you know, we should pray for pastor before he goes off to Colorado. Man, that shocked me. I almost fell under the power right there. I couldn't believe that he would ask everybody to pray for me. So he got the choir around me and prayed. And suddenly the Holy Spirit broke loose in that congregation. And people got up and began sharing. And then there was another very immature teenage girl, a beautiful young girl that was seated in the back of the church. And, and, and she got up. And under the anointing of God, she was crying. And she said, oh, you guys know I haven't been really living for God. But I want to tell you it's not worth it. You need to give your life over to Jesus Christ. And then there was confession of sin. And people were sharing. And they shared for two hours. And I didn't even get a chance to preach. And I learned long ago that God uses every one of us, whether we think we're weak or we think we're strong, whether others think we're weak or strong. God uses you because you're part of the body of Christ. Let's give God a mighty hand of applause. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You, you see, everyone is to impart. You see, uh, uh, God uses his perfect will, expresses his perfect will in imperfect vessels. We're all imperfect. You know, the Bible says we know in part and we share in part. God is a genius. <laughs> God is an incredible genius. If you only share in part, that means you need the other parts. You need each other. So you may be part of the body of Christ. You may be a nose. You may be an ear. You may, whatever. But you need the other parts of the body of Christ. You know, the basis of our fellowship in the church of Jesus Christ is not how spiritual you are, not how many verses of Scripture you can quote, not how many hours you pray every day. The basis of our fellowship is we're sinners saved by the grace of God. And when we can, hallelujah, when we can love each other that way and respect each other. Uh, you know, I, I love that song we used to sing. I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my king. And I'm glad somebody saw in me the glory of the king. Even when I had not matured in the Lord. Praise God. God wants to use us. Then when we have a healthy body. 
You see, when you have a healthy body and you have hurt in some part of the body, the rest of the healthy body flows in healing towards that hurt. In a healthy body, you have hundreds of ministries that are represented, some inside the church, some outside the church, and God pours out his gifts to equip those ministries to be even more effective than ever before. That's why it's important to know you are a part of the body. Start living like you are part of the body of Christ. Amen? And if you know you're part of the body, what a responsibility, what a privilege. Better than being in the cast of uh, uh, some major Hollywood production. Better than being a member or working for some major corporation. Better than a huge salary. You got a, uh, you got a salary better than, than anybody else on face of the earth. You got mansion in heaven, streets paved with gold. You've got something great ahead of you. So just glorify God. You are part of the body of Christ. All right, number two. Number two, you are a prophetic people. I didn't say pathetic. You are a prophetic people. Ephesians 3, verse 10, very important now. Let's read this together. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Your job is to reveal the wisdom of God to the angels in heaven, to the demons that follow the devil, and to all the pre-believers that when we do it God's way, God has won and Satan has lost. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are on a mission should you decide to accept it. Some of you Mission Impossible fans, you understand <laughs> what I was doing there. <laughs> you see, the Holy Spirit has come upon us. You don't divide God into Father, Son, and Spirit. When you're saved, the Holy Spirit is within you. Hallelujah. He just wants you to start expressing himself through you. He wants to pour out his life through you. You know, worship, worship is, is powerful. It's a, you know, the, the Holy Spirit gives you an anointing from on high. Some of you do not realize it, but when Peter quoted in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit will come on all flesh, male and female, young and old, the, the servants and handmaidens, rich and poor, God's going to break through every human barrier and say, I'm going to anoint you. This is from the book of Joel. Joel was a prophet. We're talking about a prophetic anointing. Not just that we're priests to God, but we are a prophetic people. Now, that doesn't mean every one of you is a prophet. Now, don't go walking back and, you know, just some of you wives say uh, to your husband, I'm a prophet, you've got to listen to me. Or some of you husbands say to your wife, I'm a prophet. You got no, we are a prophetic people together as the body of Christ. And the way we live and everything that we do is there to say to everyone, when you choose God's way, God wins and Satan loses. And when God wins, you win. Hallelujah. Oh, what a tremendous, tremendous lesson we, we learned there. That here we are all on the platform of the drama of redemption. That's why I wrote this, this book. You see, it's not just pastors and worship team and, and, and key leaders that are on the platform. You are all on this platform of the drama of redemption. And everything you do is a prophetic act. You know, I learned about prophetic acts when I went to Singapore and, and the Philippines. And, and, and they, they talked about bringing down the spirit of greed or, or, or pornography or, or whatever. I remember we even walked up and down the streets of Shenton Way in Singapore to bring down the spirit of greed. Strange enough, uh, they're still greedy in Singapore. Uh, no, sorry about that. I love Singapore. It's a great nation. It is an incredible nation. I wish we were there. Ah, uh, they, they, they have uh, principles that they, well, <laughs> don't let me get off track. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, but but I, I learned when I studied Scripture more that everything we do is a prophetic act. 
The way I treat my wife is a prophetic act. The way I treat my children is a prophetic act. The way you do your business, the way you uh, have tea and coffee. over. But you say, but I'm, I, I'm so human. I make so many mistakes. I get angry and, and all that. Of course. God loves you as you are, but he doesn't leave you there. He will grow you. He will develop you as you long, as you begin to realize who you are in Christ. When you as a family mutually submit to one another, you are declaring to the angels in heaven, the demons that follow the devil, you're declaring to those who are pre-believers, you're declaring when we mutually submit to one another that that's how the Trinity submits to each other. We're displaying how Christ loved the church and how Christ came to redeem the church and to defeat the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Dr. Carl Barth was one of my favorite theologians. He, in the, in the 20th century, he was, uh, he'd written volumes and volumes. In fact, his book on Romans changed the whole Christian world. The, the church was getting more and more liberal and, and thinking that we will bring in the kingdom of God ourselves. And he wrote his commentary on Romans as a man is a sinner. And it really shook up the world. He wrote many, many books. At, at one time, at a news conference in the University of Chicago, one of the news reporters asked him, uh, Dr. Barth, uh, with all your wisdom and knowledge, what is the, the greatest truth you've ever discovered in the Bible? And he said, instantly he said, the greatest truth is Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. But something he further said that helped his son ultimately to become very, very charismatic and know how to move in the gifts of the Spirit. He says, when, when the humblest saint, who, any humblest saints here? If you raise your hand, you're not the humblest saint. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I embarrass one or two of you. Okay. The humblest saint clasps his hands in prayer. Would you do that for just a moment? When the humblest saint clasps their hands in prayer, the demons have to flee. Did you know the demons fled, fled right now? Why? Not because you are the greatest power, powerful prayer warrior in ICLV. Not because you pray two hours every day. Not because you can memorize the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The humblest saint clasps his hands. Why? Because you are declaring right there, I bow before the King of Kings. I bow before the one who, who has won total victory. I bow the, before the one who said on the cross, it is finished. It has been accomplished. And when you bow like that, you, you are declaring. That's a prophetic act. When you raise your hand, that's a prophetic act. When you dance up and down, that's a prophetic act. And you praise God in whatever way because God says, he has won, and you need to declare his victory in Christ Jesus. So when you know that you, this is all a prophetic act, you declare that, that even one day the devil has to bow before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Discouragement will bow. Depression will bow. Distractions will bow. Detours will bow. Jesus says he has won the victory, and the devil one day has to say, I was wrong all the time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. That's why, that's when the gifts begin to flow. When you know you're part of the prophetic people of God. Let me mention a few of the gifts that flow at that point. When you're saved, the Holy Spirit is within you. Uh, so, so the gifts of the Spirit are potentially within you to be expressed outwardly. Now, how's, how about the gift of tongues? The gift of tongues is such a powerful gift. That's part of that great Pentecostal revival. And most of you don't even realize how important it is. The Bible tells us that he who speaks in tongues speaks mysteries. Now, I, I had to correct our, 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 the, the, those who came to the seminar. Some people had learned in their past, you know, I say that if you're going to be a Pentecostal, you have to have a sense of humor. Uh, some of the teaching that goes on, I, I don't know where it comes from, but it sure sounds weird. And, and some people say, do you know that, and, and some of you have heard this, and some of you believe this, but I'm, I'm going to break your icon down right now. <laughs> so, some of you have heard that tongues is a secret language that the devil cannot understand. Okay, question. I'm the professor, you're the students. 
Does the devil understand heavenly language? Of course. He was an angel in heaven. Does he understand every earthly language? Yes. On Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, the languages that were spoken, were they earthly languages? Of course they were. And the, the, you need to understand the word mysteries. When you study the Bible, you don't go to Webster's Dictionary for definition of words. You go to the Bible. And the word mysteries in the New Testament, check it out. Check me out. Everywhere from Matthew to Revelation, the word mystery means what was hidden in the Old Testament is now revealed in Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying when I'm praying in tongues? I'm saying God has won and Satan has lost. I'm saying Jesus died for my sins and he will forgive me all of my sins. I'm saying Jesus is coming soon. I'm saying Jesus' plan will be fulfilled and the devil's plan will be quashed. I'm saying I can move forward because I have confidence that everything that I commit to him, he will keep against that day. I'm saying I am victorious. I am more than conquer through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When I pray in tongues, I hope the devil hears every word. Does that change how you pray in tongues? Oh, I see some Christians. Oh, I, I got to figure out the secret language to talk to God. Let's see. What's the code? Three, five, two, four. Or was it nine, eight, nine, seven, six? What? Foolishness. Foolishness. Come out against the enemy and declare God's victory. Declare God's victory. Why is it so important to us? It's the one gift of all the gifts listed that is there to edify you, and you need that edification. It's there to help you to worship. And then thirdly, it's warfare. Because when you're speaking in tongues, you're declaring God's total victory over everything for the glory of God. Before I came, last night I was spending a lot of time in prayer for you. Before I do seminars, and just in, in the month of May, on Wednesday nights, I was, I was uh, Zooming. <laughs> Not flying, Zooming. <laughs> I, I was Zooming to seven countries in Asia. Let's see, Bhutan, Nepal, uh, North India, uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, uh, Vietnam, uh, um, Sri Lanka, Philippines, seven countries. But before that, I would pray in the spirit. I would pray, oh God, oh God, minister in a powerful, powerful way. And then words of wisdom and knowledge. I could spend all day talking about this. But I remember one time, I was, I was the dean at Western Pentecostal Bible College in Canada. Okay. I was academic dean, and I was also dean of students. Now, in Chinese, the word dean means crazy. And so my wife reminded me, you know, wives are wonderful. They keep you humble. She reminded me that uh, I'm doubly dean. You got that? All right. But one year, we had a, we had a tough year. We had a bad spirit in the, in the student body. And they were playing practical jokes on each other. They were complaining. They were, they were miserable. And I had to take action on that. So I called for a meeting of the entire student body one night. And I was going to tell them. I was going to show them the wrath of David Lim. I know, some of you think I'm so sweet and nice. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Boy, I fooled you so long. <laughs> oh, boy. And I was preparing my speech, and, and I was in such a hurry, I was driving back to the campus, so I grabbed a, a hamburger from the local hamburger stand, and, and as I was eating and driving, the ketchup dripped all over my tie. And I knew God had something else in mind. And so there, were, there they were that night, and they had an opening prayer. And I got up off my seat, and I was about to give, give them the wrath. I was about to give them the, the speech of their lives, and God just gave me a word of wisdom. He said, love them. God, you just ruined my speech. You ruined everything I was going to say to them. God, I was so well prepared. And I, love them. And I told them, you know, I was going to really scold you, but God told me to love you. 
You may not realize it, but at our Bible school, our faculty are paid 40% less than any other Bible school in Canada. But we do it because we love you, and we want you to not go into debt. And we want to share with you and impart to you so you can go into ministry without going into debt. Huge revival broke out. People started confessing their sins. Unity began to develop. After we were praying and seeking God for about two hours that night, one of the students from Africa got up and said, now that we've identified the enemy, we can have victory through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And then, and then the next day in chapel, we had the boringest preacher we've ever had. But after he preached, we all began to get to our knees and seek God. And he must have thought, boy, what, what did I do this time? What did I say? Did I preach the sermon of my life? But, but God was already moving. God was already doing incredible, incredible things at that time. You see, then God gives you a word of wisdom. And he teaches you not to fight certain battles, but teach you to fight the right battles. The battles that make a difference 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Uh, battles that will make a difference for all eternity's sake. You see, you need wisdom. I need wisdom. God gives you those gifts. When you need those things, you ask of God and God gives them to you. And then deliverance and inner healing. You see, it's not just physical healing that we, we need. We need inner healing. Who amongst us has not been hurt? Who amongst us has not gone through injustice in our lives? Or maybe abuse, or maybe there's bitterness or unforgiveness. I thank God for what we're doing here at ICLV. Pastor Mason has come uh, to, to every three months. We have an encounter weekend. That's powerful. A time where, where people can examine their lives and see where there's bitterness and hurt and things that we need to put under the blood of Jesus Christ. And then we pray them through to the baptism of the Spirit. And, and those are powerful encounter nights so that, so that people can take their hurts and throw them into the fire and, and let it be burned uh, up so that we can be genuinely, fully fulfilling our potential in Jesus Christ. God wants to do all of that for us. Thirdly, okay, number one, your body, you're the body of Christ. Number two, you're a prophetic people. Remember that. Start living up to it. There's a hurt world out there that needs you to speak words. You know what? I, I want to encourage every one of you, even over lunch today. I know some of you are thinking more about lunch than my sermon. I know. You know, there was a, a, a mega church, I think it was a Baptist church in Texas one day, and uh, there was a seminary professor there, and he came out, and, and there was a young preacher. He was shaking hands, and the professor said, my son, you did a good job preaching. You interrupted my thinking six times. I know I've interrupted some of your thinking. <laughs> I hope I've interrupted your lives. I hope I've interrupted your lives. Hallelujah. So you need to say even over lunch or over tea or coffee, can I say a word that will bless my brother, my sister? Can I encourage them? Because God can take that word to their heart and change their lives around. We need to begin to speak blessing into one another's lives. All right, number three, we are priests unto God. All right, priests unto God. Ephesians 3, 14. Let's read that verse, please. Ephesians 3, 14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. What do priests do? They pray. They seek God. Paul prays in that passage that you may re even have the strength to, uh, to grasp the love of God, the height, the depth, the breadth, the, the width of the, the love of God. It is so big. My friend, if you can grasp who God is, it'll change your life forever. And he, as priests unto God, therefore, as priests unto God, we cover our families. Every morning when my wife and I, we wake up earlier now, not because we're so spiritual, but because as you get older, you wake up earlier. You'll know. You young people, you will understand that. 
All right. Uh, but uh, I pray over my wife. I cover you with the love of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. I'm the spiritual gateway to the family. And no enemy can attack unless uh, he comes through me first. Then I pray for my three daughters and their families, and I cover them. Folks, if we are priests unto God, we cover each other with the love of God. Maybe we have single parents here, men or women that are single parents. You know, in the church, my father died when I was eight and a half years old, but I found, I found fathers in the church. I found people that could offer a covering. Maybe you can have, find covering in a cell group, in a life group that we have. Together, we cover one another so the enemy cannot attack. Somebody say amen. We love each other and we cover one another in Christ Jesus. Then we, we uh, release those in bondage. We speak words of blessing. We speak words of forgiveness. Some people can't hear from God on forgiveness, but they can hear from you. And when you teach them the word of God and that they are forgiven in Christ, that will free them up. In James 5:16, it says, you need to confess your sins to one another another and pray for one another that you may be healed. There is that togetherness that we have in Christ Jesus. I believe in the local church. I believe in what God is doing here at ICLV. I believe that God is in charge of his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. 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 And then fourthly, you are conquering kings. You are a king. Look to someone right now and say, you're a king or you're a queen. Hallelujah. Did you know who you are? Let's read this verse. The verse is here. Okay. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. You see, you are victorious. You're a victorious king. So we live in light of the coming of the Lord. Here, the Lord's coming again. You're facing a hiccup, a problem. Don't worry. The Lord's coming. You're facing depression, discouragement. People are gossiping. The Lord is coming. Oh, you're facing overwhelming challenges. Maybe you're facing struggles within your body. The Lord is coming. And we live in light of the coming of the Lord. And that's what motivates us. And that's what tells us what to do. I'm confused about what to do. Jesus is coming. That will tell you what to do. You begin walking in light of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you get that heavenly perspective. You begin to pray for the sick. You know, uh, you say, but what if they don't get well right away? That's okay. Your job is to pray for the sick. You leave the rest to God. Uh, I, I pray for people to get filled with the Holy Spirit. What happens if they don't speak in tongues yet? That's okay. You pray and claim it in Jesus' name. You do your part. Let God do his part. We speak prophetically into people's lives. Speak prophetically into people's lives. I was a young teenager, about 13 years of age. I had told nobody about my calling as to be a preacher, to be a pastor. Told nobody. My youth pastor came up to me and said, God's called you for the ministry, hasn't he? Uh, my mouth fell open. How did he know? We build each other up. We speak health into each other's lives. We speak power into each other's lives. We speak prophetically into each other's lives. Hallelujah. Let's give God a mighty hand of applause. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Let's stand together. Let's praise God together. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Right now, I know I've gone over a little bit, but uh, we still have time. I want you to just find one or two people and just pray into their lives. Pray into their lives what God is giving you. Pray and minister into their lives right now. Find one or two or three people and just begin to pray into their lives. Hallelujah. Just for a few moments, let's just brief prayers, but let's claim it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Speak blessing, speak blessing, speak blessing into each other's lives. The Lord, miracles, miracles of finance, miracles, miracles of healing, miracles of relationships, miracles, miracles in Jesus' name. I claim your victory now in Jesus' name. I claim it for the young. I claim it for the older ones. I claim it for those going through struggles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that's right. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One or two more minutes, and then we want to sing and rejoice. Sing one or two more minutes of prayer. Pray. for this word this morning. Thank you for Dr. Lim and for May. Jesus, thank you for this word. As we close this morning, we want to open the altars up if we have our team come up here. If you need prayer this morning before you leave, if you want to come and get prayer, maybe you want to uh, give your heart over to the Lord, rededicate your life to the Lord, or just have someone connect and agree with you in prayer this morning. Some of our team will be up here. Thank you so much. We love you. Have an incredible week. Pray for our youth this week as they're in camp, and we'll see you on Sunday. Hey, thanks again for checking out ICLB here on YouTube. Hope you're already subscribed, getting notifications. Make sure you're following us on all our social media channels. Download our mobile app, and check us out Sundays, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., online, in person. We want to see you there. God bless.